Good morning from Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival. Today is the very first day of Flower and Garden, as you can see by this goofy topiary behind me. I'm excited to try all the food. I'm excited to see all of the flowers and gardens. I'm excited because I got to come to the first day. Yeah. And I never got to come to the first day of the other one, the international one. Yeah. So like, it's a party. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you walk in, there's Mickey and Pluto and Minnie, and there's Goofy back there too. I feel like you guys know that I like to show Spaceship Earth for the wait time. It just went up to 45 minutes. Oof, it's gonna be a busy day. Fun fact, there are many that believe Spaceship Earth is technically a roller coaster because of the layout of the track or the style of the track. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment down below. Is Spaceship Earth a roller coaster? I have never seen Muppet Mobile Lab before. Around the world in under one minute and a half. Isn't that fun? Let me hear you, everybody! Woo! Woo! Uh, we go after seeing what it's like around the world. You will probably want to stick around after all, isn't that right? Speaker, I've never heard you so articulate. Hey, everyone, wasn't that just fantastic? Yes? Yes, who was deeply affected by Peter's speech right now? Let's see a show of hands. That was so cool. I've never seen Muppet Mobile Lab before. I'd like to see the whole show one day, but it was very, very interesting. We're going to head and check out Future World's offerings first, then we'll head out to World Showcase and see what kind of food we can find. Over here, sort of near Journey to Imagination, they've got a topiary of Daisy and uh, Chip and Dale and some giant flowers. And then as we turn to our left here, we can go into the butterfly garden or the goodness garden. I like the name of that. But then they also planted butterfly attracting plants out front here. So there's even some butterflies that you can see before you can come in. And bees. Bees? Oh, look at him. Oh, bye. We're best friends. There's a bee. Whoa. That's an interesting looking butterfly. Oh, no, they were fighting. Butterfly fight. Just kind of hanging out on the sign here. Look at that. This one's doing that like quintessential butterfly thing where it like flaps its little wings around. They've also got some cocoons over here that will turn into butterflies very soon. There's a butterfly right there. I think this one's perfect. Oh, oh, scared me. Oh, oh, there's one right here though too, Jen. They're all over the place. There's so many right here. It's like a, like a butterfly party. Oh, one landed on me for a second. This is too exciting. There's too many butterflies happening right now. Oh, there's a big old butterfly topiary over there just outside of the goodness garden. Look at the coloring here. Wow, it is so bright. Big old butterfly right here. Look at this. Wow, it really does amaze me the colors that are in nature. Look at how beautiful they are. If the monorail would just go by right now, perfect thumbnail. Let's head over to the other side of Future World and see what they have over there. I think they have the Lightning McQueen topiary, which I'm excited to see. And of course, we'll get there through mouse gear and check out some of the uh, Flower and Garden merchandise. Oh my goodness. Look at this Flower and Garden Festival mug. This is amazing. $22.99. Looks like a light bulb. Also figment. I love this mug. I really am glad to start to see Epcot really embrace Figment. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it says Flower and Garden right there on his little leg. And he's got butterflies and everything. This Figment ornament is $19.99. For $30, there is a Flower and Garden Festival Tervis Tumbler. Unearth the unexpected. I wonder if that's the unofficial official statement or phrase of this event. Celebrating 25 years. This is really nice. $25 for the Flower and Garden Festival hat. Not my favorite, but it's still still kind of cool. For $60, they made their own spirit jersey for Flower and Garden. It says Natural Beauty, and there's a mini with a sweet headband on. It's very cute. Like, I do think that these are cute, but also, I don't look good in oversized clothes, so I don't know who this is geared towards. I, I like it, but I would never buy one. What do you guys think? What's your thoughts on spirit jerseys? Like them? Don't like them? Let me know. I need to know. For $26, they have the mini version of the Tervis Tumbler. Not small, but Mini Mouse. Minnie's Farmhouse. It should say Minnie Mouse's Farmhouse, right? Because that kind of rhymes. It's cool, though. 
I like all the little flowers and stuff on it. So it seems like we've got two mascots of the Flower and Garden Festival, and that's Minnie and Figment. I think they realize that Figment is the fan favorite, but they sort of like Minnie. This is a $13.99 mug. Oh, that's cool. Look at this one. Oh, it's a tank top. Yeah, and then it has like an insert of the print on the back. That's cool. This is $37. I would wear this. Huh, that's very expensive for a tank top. Well, I'm just saying a word. I wouldn't buy it. Mm. For $13, there's this little flower and garden keychain. There's very small little spinning insert inside of it. All right, so this is kind of silly. It says plant kindness. And then it's got the Flower and Garden Festival thing here, and then it's got a flower inside of it, and this lights up. They sold one of these for Beauty and the Beast, and then we saw it at, like, Walgreens for a lot cheaper. So I'd be interested to see if we could find this purple one at Walgreens. For $15, this little pencil case or makeup case, it's kind of cool. $30 for this Minnie Mouse uh, Flower and Garden. It's kind of like an extra wide neck, scoop neck type it's thing. Dolman, dolman sleeve. Yeah. Well, there's like an apron for when you're out in the garden planting your flowers, just oh, like Minnie. Is it for gardening? I, I don't know. I would assume so. Waterproof. Maybe. This would be good for the kitchen too. Oh yeah. yeah. wonder how much is it? 27 Well, it's not too bad. And then $30 for this drawstring bag. It kind of looks like, oh no, I thought maybe it was reversible, but it's not. It has, just has the flower pattern on the back. I kind of like this whole Minnie's Farmhouse theming that they're doing. Yeah. It's cute. I like the figment theming better. Oh, well. <laughs> There's a little garden playground over here with some seats for the parents to relax in. This is nice. I would like to sit here and relax. There she is, Cruz Ramirez, my hero. There's Mr. Lightning, Lightning McQueen. Let's look at her and smile. <laughs> Here's a little bit better look at Lightning. I like that they used like clovers to make his lightning. Look, there's a guy messing with the purple martin. What are those, nests? He's doing it. In case you guys were curious about the purple martin nest, here they are up here. I believe that they help eat mosquitoes and stuff. He's just checking on the birds right now. Oh, they put all the little floating flower beds back. They look so good. Holy cow, they really went all out with flower and garden merch. And you can see they got some orange bird stuff up here. I thought I would show you guys all of the different prices, but there's just so much of it. Holy cow. Oh, look, they made trash cans. Salt and pepper shakers. I do like this hat with the ears on it, though. That's fun. There's my boy Figment sitting on top of his ball. They, they've had the same figment topiary for so long. Now as we approach World Showcase, you can see they've started putting up the stage because they're going to film the TV show The Chew here. But which way do we choose? Do we go right or do we go left? We want to go all the way around World Showcase. Which way do you guys normally go? I normally go left. I don't know why, but that's just the direction that I normally head. But sometimes during food festivals, I head right because usually there's a Hawaiian booth over here that I like. This is the hardest decision we'll make today. There's a sign over here that proves me wrong. It's not for The Chew. It's for the Steve Harvey Show. I had no idea the Steve Harvey show was going to be filming here. Look at these giant butterfly topiaries. Those are cool. Oh, the first one that we come up to is La Isla Fresca. Ooh, this sounds pretty good actually. A real quick look at the prices. I feel like everything used to be just $6. Now the majority of it is $6.25, $6.75. I don't know, I think we're heading up in the prices. Hey Jen. Yeah? Flower and Garden Festival. Nothing beats it. Oh, I thought it was a turnip. I was going to say what? turn up. I think it's a beat. It's an artist rendition, so I'm not sure. Yeah, who knows? Here is the Spike's Pollination Exploration Map. So you go around and you're looking for Spike. This is Spike here. And he is going around and showing off all the different flowers around Flower and Garden. And then if you find them all, you can win one of these four prizes here. And these are sew on patches that you can put on anything, really, I guess. You can put whatever you want to sew on. As with every food festival, we like to get a gift card, and it's the kind that fits around your wrist. And Disney has started putting these little protective flaps over the back. One, so that nobody can read the numbers, and two, so that if anybody has any sort of, like, skimming device that they're walking around the park with, this should protect the card. I don't know if this card actually has that, but that's what the cast member told us. I know that usually they just scan it with a barcode scanner. So, I don't know, it's pretty interesting though. I think this is also like one of our biggest tips. It seems like something very simple and easy, but this is a good way to keep kind of track of your budget. Yeah. So if you're on vacation and you're like, I'm only giving myself, you know, 50 bucks to spend today at Epcot, you can't go over $50 because it'll, it'll say you don't have any money left. Right. So that's like how we 
keep our budget because if not I think we'd probably spend like a bajillion dollars yeah and also our bank card only limits us to a certain number of trans transactions per day so yeah. this is just one transaction on the bank card mm -hmm. and then it's unlimited transactions on the gift card but if we don't use it all it also stays on here so we can bring it back the next time and I've used one of these gift cards at Disneyland too oh yeah <laughs> that's right yeah next up is the berry basket oh they've got lamb chop here with quinoa salad and blackberry gastrique the heck is a gastrique I don't know but it looks good though field greens just strawberry and quinoa why is everything quinoa here it's the berry basket not the quinoa basket healthy <laughs> the lamb chop looks kind of good the salad looks okay not however much they were charging for it though this warm berry buckle looks really good though also one of the other big things about flower and garden festivals they have a series called garden rocks where you can come and see different bands play on the american adventure theater stage like smash mouth or rick springfield these look good yeah see the village people this is one of the more permanent booths here near mexico looks good I, okay. Ooh, the tiger lily sangria though what were you gonna say i was looking at this one uh the taco yeah but i just don't know if i love goat cheese oh i'm gonna get it are you yeah I, I used to really like the flavor of goat cheese and i think now i don't i'm gonna get it okay let's try it and what better place to have this than right next to the three caballeros they are singing to us about tacos maybe <laughs> look it's got a little flower on it i thought that was a really cute touch you know your boy got his free taco it wasn't free <laughs> here we go oh my gosh what the heck what was it bad when i first took a bite of it i was like oh this is good and then some sort of weird like vinegary yeah. taste hit my back of my throat caused me to choke oh no what is that so it's definitely not worth 625 no oh okay i wouldn't get this again <laughs> oh no let me try it no prejudgments you have to clear your mind and let the food do the talking why is spicy right what is it it's like sweet and spicy apple pie with pork it's very strange right i do not like that <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like an apple pie on top of a taco mm, apple tacos with pork I wouldn't buy this. I'm kind of sad that we did buy this. I'm kind of confused here. Why? Why? Why isn't this open? I don't think this is for the event. I think this is just always here now. No. Are you sure? Yeah, this is the first I've ever seen this. Like even during the other festivals, it's not here. Oh. Yeah. This is very strange. I feel like maybe we're not 100% ready for opening day because there's a troll topiary. There's supposed to be a sign there. There's nothing there though. But here's the little spike character that you're looking for and the little flower that you're supposed to put the sticker next to for the Norway spot. So this is the only one we're gonna show you guys so you guys can come here and find them for yourselves and we're not ruining the game. Up next is the Lotus House. Spicy meatballs, chicken fried dumplings. Yeah, ooh, Kung Fu Punch. That's pretty fun sounding. Nazavinia! Here's all the topiaries from the Lion King. There's a festival market over here where they're still selling some art, almost like Festival of the Arts. I really feel like Disney is doing a great job of doing throwbacks to older characters like Figment and Orange Bird that all of the fans love. Here's the next booth, Potato Pancakes. I like how they have potato pancakes with vegan or vegetarian, and then they've got potato pancakes with ham. I'm gonna get those pancakes with ham. They sound pretty good. Here's the potato pancake with ham. One <laughs> one singular chunk of ham. There must be more ham under there. Oh, there's a yeah, little bit more. Yeah, yeah, Two, there's some more. three chunks of ham. No, uh, there's a little uh, bit more. Uh, uh, about three. About three. And then this actually looks really good. It's very small, but it looks really good. This is the potato roll. Does it have chunks of ham like this? I think it's. it should have shaved ham. I think. I'm gonna bite into it oh, and yeah. we'll, we'll try it out like that. It looks really good. It, like the crispy cheese looks delicious. First bite. That was the potato pancake with ham. For four fifty, I don't think it's worth it. Oh, well, this is one of the cheaper items here at the festival too. Is it really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. How much was how much was my roll? Oh, it was five. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So you actually got a lot more food for four fifty with the potato pancake than I got with the pretzel roll. Okay, if I'm if I'm excluding the price of everything and just talking about the taste, this does taste very good. 
though. I, I do like the taste. I think that might be what we have to do in this video is just, we'll show you what the prices are, but we won't put bright price into the, but we won't put price into the judgment because everything's expensive. Okay. It looks really good. It does. Mm. Let me see the inside. Let me show it. Let me. Oh yeah. That looks good. It's really good. Okay. It's I want... really good. It tastes like a uh, pretzel cheese hot dog. A little bit. What? More hammy flavored than a hot dog, but <laughs> that's the basic idea of it. You know what I mean? Like I can see somebody being like, we should make something like that with a tube steak. <laughs> Just had the last little bite of that pretzel roll. I, I am vouching for that being amazing. I think that was our favorite thing so far. We haven't had very many things yet, but right. But that was good. That I feel like that's the best thing I've had at any festival. And I felt okay about paying five dollars for it. Okay. So I would say thumbs up. These are called Alpine containers or rock gardens. They're just like hollowed out rocks that have flowers in them. I kind of like this idea a lot. I want these all over the place. Over at the Primavera Kitchen near Italy, oh, no. uh, it does not, nothing looks really good to me at all, except for that frozen Italian margarito. Yes, I'm actually having a hard time not showing you guys where the spikes are. They're kind of all over the place and very easy to find. A lot easier than Remy was to find. Look at Lady in the Tramp. I like Lady's hair. I get like her ears. They're all fluffy. We'll definitely have to come back another day because the American Adventure is back open now with new projections. I wonder if a lot of people were missing the smokehouse because it's kind of back in the back in the America area here. But they, this is the first time I've ever seen them put up a sign like that pointing it in the correct direction. Wanted to give you guys a look at the menu from the smokehouse. Uh, actually, the beef brisket sounds really good. I might have to do that. Oh, the beef brisket with burnt ends hash, except for the jalapenos. Everything looks good. There's Woody. And actually, I was gonna get something here, but it kind of looks like the line is really long. And they changed the way that you go in, too. Normally, you come in from this direction, just get in line and then get your food and then head out. Now they switched it around. There's the frushi. I feel like we should get the frushi because everybody likes it. I've had the yaki udon before and it's good. Uh, I don't eat salmon, so I think we might try to do the frushi. Here's the frushi. It looks so fun. It looks like real life sushi, but made with fruit. And then here is the udon. It doesn't look very delicious, but I feel like it tastes good. Yeah. You know? Those are some big old onions. What did you think? You just tried the udon. I do like it. And the, the beef has a good flavor. The noodles are good. I did it again. Was it I, very I, oniony? It did have a lot of onions in it. I feel like I would get it again because I did get it again. I got it last year and I liked it last year. Two years ago? Maybe, yeah. Whenever they had it last, I liked it, so. Thumbs up for me. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that's pretty interesting. It's good. It's not the flavor that I thought it was gonna be. It's less sweet. Yeah. I like that it's like just a subtle sweetness. Yeah, uh, the rice is a little bit overpowering, if you ask me. Is it? Yeah. It's good though. It's not as desserty as we're used to here in America. A little bit of a tip here. I don't know why, but this side of the Hanami booth has a line always. This side doesn't ever really have one. Like right now, there's nobody over there ordering, but the other side has a ton of people. Flower and garden. You won't radish the possibility. I don't know. Um, I guess beet is the best that we can do. Radish. What, kind what are you doing? Oh, what? <laughs> I feel like we peaked at beet. You can't beat it. I hope that's a beet. Is that our peak? Did we peak? We peaked. Next booth is Taste of Marrakesh. Let's see what's on the menu here. A chicken kebab, fried cauliflower. Oh, walnut honey baklava. Actually, it sounds kind of good. Oh, desert rose. Everything sounds really interesting here. It's a chili ranch sauce. This is the fried cauliflower. It looks like a real little... It looks really good. It looks like a large portion, and it's not in one of those little cardboard things. It looks nice. What's the sauce? I think this is a sauce that comes with like a blooming onion. I like that. Would you say, hmm? Mmm. <laughs> really good. The next one is Florida Fresh. And this is gonna be so good. Oh, that sounds delicious. I don't eat shrimp, but it still sounds delicious. Key lime tart sounds so good. Jen's favorite drink in all of Epcot is this watermelon cucumber slushy with gin. It's so good. Here is the beef. It's the carne 
something. Carne guisada. Here is Jen's. This is the watermelon uh, cucumber gin drink that I love, but I'm not gonna lie. Um, these sizes keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and the prices keep getting bigger and bigger. So one day I won't be able to afford this drink anymore. Oh no. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Here's one thing that I noticed. What? Look at how much grease is in there. It is very greasy, but whatever that salsa is, really is nice on it. I think it's refreshing, but also heavy. Like, I feel full, but it's also refreshing because of the salsa. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like it. Oh. Hold on, baby. I feel like I, I did, I peeked at the pretzel thing. The pretzel <laughs> thing was so good. This is good. I like Don't it. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad. I think you just love cheese and we haven't been eating cheese. Pretty good, yeah, I do. I catch the refreshing but still filling type thing. Yeah. I like it. Sorry, the lighting is getting kind of funky, so I was, there you go. Yeah. I like it though. I would probably get this again after the pretzel roll, of course. Over near France, Fleur de Lis. Oh, tomato provincial. That macaroon. Uh, I saw pictures of it. Yeah, I'm gonna get some of that. It sounds so good and it looked so good too. Oh, it's gluten free. There's Beauty and the Beast. That's quite a topiary. Here's some pictures of it. I had no idea that this tart was basically a little pizza. The sign says pomegranate, but this is not a pomegranate. This is the flower. You can see it opening up up here. Where does the pomegranate come into play? Maybe. It reforms. I like how this is Timus vulgaris. Yeah. I feel like me, Shoot. me in herb form. <laughs> Behold the macaroon. It's the size of your glass, well, the one part of your glasses. It looks it's very delicious. Large. I kind of thought it was going to be ice cream, oh, but it's not. Macaroon. It's like just good chocolate, chocolatey, gooey goodness. Oh, yeah. You going to take a bite of it? No, I thought you should take the first bite. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mmm. <laughs> That's good. Just like a lot of chocolate? It's a lot of chocolate. It's very thick chocolate. So it's like very rich? Um, no. It's got this weird consistency where when you bite into it, then it becomes hard. Oh. You know what I mean? No. Like, it's almost like it's it's inflated but chewy. Like ganache? Maybe. Or like, uh, hmm, I can't think of anything else. It looks good. It is good. Here's the duck from France. Looks kind of good. It looks a little bit like mush. What? This, there was nothing on the sign that looked like this. Oh, it's the gnocchi. Oh. Okay. Uh, All right. Okay, I'm going to take a teeny tiny bite. It tastes like Thanksgiving. Oh. Yeah, it tastes like the holidays. It's good. It's very heavy though. Flower and garden. Could it turn up even further? It's very radishing. Like ravishing. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, I had to explain <laughs> it. It wasn't that good. <laughs> Over here in the English gardens, they've got tea set up. So it's like a tea tour that you can take and they show you what all is in this pot. Huh, it's pretty neat. There's hook and pan, which I don't know why they're over here because usually pan is up on top of the building. I feel like they're they're cutting corners. Well, <laughs> I don't think they're cutting corners as much as maybe they're just trying to make a different. Maybe. <laughs> Here's the Royal Garden Tour that starts at 9:45 every day, but you do have to have reservations for it. I think it might be free. I'm not really sure. I should look it up. We'll leave it somewhere down in the description down below. What all's going on with this tour? Okay, so there's more than just one tour time. So like here. 3.30 and 5. Here's the menu for Cider House, which is in the UK section of the park. Here's a look at the photos they took of some of the things that are available here at the Cider House. It looks pretty darn good, actually. Eeyore and Piglet. Look at Piglet's eyeballs, though. Those are kind of fun. And I like how Eeyore's like, oh, bother. Oh, wait, that's not what Eeyore says. What, is, what does Eeyore say? He says, nobody likes me. Who looks a little bit fluffier than he normally does. I kind of like this look on Pooh. Northern Bloom over by the Canada Pavilion. Seared scallops, beef tenderloin tips, grilled maple pound cake. Where's a picture of that? Whoa, look at that. These tenderloin tips look kind of good though. Here are the beef tenderloin tips from the Canada area. They look pretty good. Looks very, very hearty though, which is probably not good for a hot day, but I hope it tastes good. 
a lot chewier than I thought it was gonna be. What kind of beef is it? Tenderloin. Oh, how's the gravy? I thought the gravy would have flavor, but it doesn't really taste like anything. Well, it's disappointing. The refreshment port has a few offerings for the festival, like a croissant donut, stowaway Mary, which is basically just a Bloody Mary with a fried chicken on top, and then poutine, which I think these are here normally anyways. So maybe it's not special for the... They just put a sign out. We're almost to the end of our trip. We got a couple more booths, like the pineapple promenade that has a spicy hot dog, which I think I had last year, and it wasn't that good. Uh, pineapple soft serve, ooh, that you can also get with rum in it. So that's basically just a rum flavored Dole Whip. Those are the only foods at this booth. Oh look, the honey bistro. More cauliflower, what? <laughs> Tandoori chicken. Wildflower honey marscapone cheesecake. Sounds pretty good. Might have to get just one more thing. Just one more in the honey bistro. I hope there's bees everywhere. There's some bee boxes. I don't know that those actually have bees inside of them. Might be kind of a dangerous thing for Disney to do with the amount of people that are allergic to bees. Ooh, look at all this honey. Oh my goodness, this cheesecake looks so good. Look at how beautiful that is. That's good, that's real good. That's a very honey filled flavor to it though. I like it. It really does kind of feel like a gigantic family cookout here. All kinds of playgrounds and stuff to eat and stuff to do. It just happens to be a family cookout that you spend a lot of money on. There's tables that are made out of logs that they're playing checkers at. More little gardens here like the terracotta crafts. And then this is a whole garden made out of cinder blocks. That's pretty interesting. Welcome to my butterfly haven. Oh, look at the size of that butterfly! You know what I just overheard? What? Somebody's like, oh, that's why my allergies are going nuts. Because of the flowers. <laughs> the last topiaries that we see here are Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and Donald. They're doing some gardening. Donald is trying to catch the bee, but it's on his forehead. So there you have it. That was our very first day at Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival for the very first day of the event. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. I think that I ate too much food. I don't think I ate enough this trip. Oh. I think next time that we come, I'm gonna try some more things. Yeah. Yeah. Just to give you guys a perspective, we put $100 on the gift card. There is now $11 left. Good time. <laughs> <laughs> So I would say, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a pricey event for sure. Yeah. I think for us, this is one of those things that's like a treat. Like we won't come every week right. or anything like that. But I, I think we will make a second trip for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this was like a mega super flower and garden video. We did all of World Showcase. We did a lot of stuff in Future World. Ate a lot of food, saw the buzz guys, the, the spike, and saw all the topiaries. We did it. So yeah, with that being said, we are off. We will see you guys tomorrow. We're Paul and Jana. We're from Poinciana, Florida, and, and now, now it's, it's time, time to pay, pay the, the price. price.